All right, calculus class. So this one, it's the um, the brand new formula for the um, derivative of inverse trig function, trigonometric function. So take a look at that. Inverse of in, uh, derivative of inverse of sine of x is considered one over square root of the quantity one minus x squared. And then for the in, uh, for the cos inverse of cosecant, derivative of inverse of cosecant. So it's quite similar. It's negative one over x times square root of x squared minus 1. Now, as you can see that the structure here, inverse of sine, inverse of cosine, the derivative, they're quite similar. But one is positive, the other one is negative. So same thing happened with that inverse of tangent, inverse of cotangent. As you can see that the derivative, the structures, they're quite similar. It's 1 over the quantity of 1 plus x squared. One is positive, the other one is negative. And for the uh, cosecant and inverse of secant, also they're quite similar. So secant is positive, but for negative, uh, for the inverse of cosecant, it's negative. Okay, so now the first one I would like to show you is the proof. So why is this always true? So let's prove one of the complicated ones, inverse of secant. Derivative of inverse of secant is considered 1 over x times the quantity of square root of x squared minus 1. So for those you might be wondering, how do we prove this? Well, back to the trigonometry, so we can always draw the diagram, so we do know that inverse of secant of x is always theta. Because that x over 1, well, if the denominator is not shown, it's always 1. It's always the ratios of secant of theta. So in other words, secant of theta, it's considered x over 1. Okay? So now, if you just draw the diagram here, we do know that's a special right triangle. So theta, it's right here. It's bounded right between the terminal psi and the x-axis. So secant, the ratio for that is always considered hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse over adjacent. Now for those, you might be wondering, opposite is missing here. Well, the thing's not, no need to worry about it. Opposite is missing, you can always find it by using the Pythagorean theorem. So square root of x squared minus one. And now, what we can do here, Take the derivative implicitly with respect to theta. So derivative of secant, then that'd be secant and tangent. Okay, so let's put it right here. So derivative of secant is secant and tangent. But don't forget, theta, that's just the, uh, the variable. So it's like theta prime, just like y here. Implicit differentiation. And then for x, derivative of x, that's just 1. And now you want to solve for theta prime. So in order to solve for theta prime, so you want to put in 1 over secant of theta, tangent of theta, because you want to divide secant tangent of both sides. So reciprocals of secant is considered cosine. And reciprocals of tangent is considered cotangent. And now for those who might be wondering, well, Eventually, it's going to be like this, right? Everything's going to be written in terms of x. So now, what else can we do? Back to the diagram here. What's cosine of theta? Cosine of theta, it's always considered adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 1 over x. What about cotangent of theta? Adjacent over opposite. So it's 1 over the quantity of square root of x squared minus 1. And now, rational expression, just multiply them straight across. So eventually it's 1 over x times the quantity, square root of x squared minus 1. Proof. Derivative of inverse of secant of x. Okay, so now how do we apply the formula for finding the derivative of inverse of cotangent, inverse of cosine, and inverse of sine? So one thing that you want to do, you want to set up the inner function as u. x to the power of 1 half. So using that chain rule, u prime, so 1 half, x to the power of negative 1 half. So take the derivative of this function, well, let's just rewrite it. So it's y equals, let y equals cotangent of u. So y prime, then that will be considered, well, what's the derivative of inverse of cotangent? Which is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. So negative 1 over 1 plus u squared times, don't forget, chain rule, u prime. And then we just want to bring everything all together. So negative 1 over 1 plus, well, u, what is that? x to the power of 1 half quantity squared. Then that's just 1 half times 2, which is what? Just 1. 
x to the first power. And then u prime times one half x to the power of negative one half. And that would be the derivative of the inverse of cotangent of square root of x. And now what about this? Quite similar. Again, whatever the inner function that you see here, you want to set that as u. So we can find out u prime. Because this one involved with the chain rule. So anytime they see the other function, inner function, always set up the inner function as u. So u prime, then that'll be considered 2. 2 times dx, we want to say that. So y prime, well, let's just put in y first. So let y equals inverse of cosine of u. So that means y prime, using the formula, inverse of cosine of u, which is what? Negative 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared. So negative 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared times u prime, because the chain rule. Okay, so now for the rest of this, you want to unplug everything. So negative 1 over square root of 1 minus, so u, which is 2x plus 1, quantity squared. And then times u prime, what's u prime here? Times 2. We can put in times 2 dx, but dx, that's meaningless. Eventually, so it's written as negative 2 over square root of 1 minus. There's no need to expand it. I mean, you can expand it, combine the like term if you want, but that's just extra work, taking extra time for that. And no need to rationalize it, just leave it. Okay? And now, what about for C? I think I erased that one. Okay, let's see right here. You know what? I'll just make up one. So I believe that C is the inverse of sine. So y equals inverse of sine. I'll just make up the inner function. e to the power of x plus 1. Okay? I'll just make it up. So for that one, so basically, again, u. So you want to set that as e to the power of x plus 1. Okay? So u equals e to the power of x plus 1, then u prime, derivative of e to the power of x, which is the same thing, derivative of 1, that's 0. And now y equals inverse of sine of u, so substitution. So it's all about the u substitution. And now take the derivative, so y prime equals inverse of sine, derivative of inverse of sine of u, which is considered 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared times u prime, chain rule. And then unplug everything. So y prime equals 1 over square root of 1 minus, what's u again? The quantity of e to the power of x plus 1 squared. And then times u prime times e to the power of x plus 1, parentheses. So part two of the lesson is kind of short, but make sure that you need to recognize all those formula, derivative of inverse trigonometric functions, all six of them. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today. All right, have a great one.